Dolly is definitely one. Yes, it's gonna I happen. Like, we have to do. Put like, it out there. Yes, there you go. She's gonna watch it. She's oh. gonna listen at this. Can oh. you imagine like, a mashup of it of her doing <laughs> Jolene and y'all doing your part and that kind of back and forth? That would be hilarious. Amazing. <laughs> yes. Welcome to this episode of Bored and Curious. I'm your host, Mary Katz, and today y'all are in for a treat. Today's guests are the talented and hilarious singing trio Chapel Heart, who are members of CMT's Next Women of Country for 2021. Y'all get ready for your cheeks to be hurting from laughing so hard, because these gals are a trip. Alrighty, let's get started. We can go ahead and get started. You guys can go ahead and tell me about where you grew up. Take it take it all the way back to, to little baby Chapel Heart. What did you guys want to be when you were little? Chapel. Yes, the little ones. And how did you get into music? Well, going back to the itty bitty Chapel Hearts is kind of a great place to start since I don't know if you know, we were three of 108 first cousins. And we all started singing in church together. And we used to have we used to have a children's choir with about, you know, just a couple of the cousins, about 50 or so kids. And, and you know, that's kind of like where we all got started in a little town called Hearts Chapel. I feel like I've always wanted to be a singer, but also be in a small town. Like you're always told, that's not a real job. That's cute. But what do you really want to be? And so, of course, you know, life took us down all kinds of different roads. But look where we wound up. Absolutely. Now, are you guys are from what's the little it's a little town in Mississippi? Poplarville. Oh, I saw something. Okay, so I saw your videos in, I hope I'm going to say this right, Past Christian? Past Christian. Past yeah. Christian. I knew I was going well, to say that wrong. Christian, yeah. Yeah. See, I went to church camp <laughs> there. I went to church camp there when really? I was, yeah, when I was like 18. See, and I remember my youth pastor would, he kept calling it Past Christian. And I'm like, you realize we're Christians, right? Like it's, we know the word, but even right. so. Right. Our manager's from New Orleans and he was like, so we'll be in past Christian today. I was like, it's definitely past Christian. <laughs> like, it doesn't, you don't feel it until you're Mississippian and people say past Christian. I was telling our manager, I was like, you of all people should understand wording because New Orleans street names, I can tell you are the worst. Not Burgundy, but Burgundy. Oh my <laughs> And words like Chapatulas, who does that? So when did you guys realize that you actually wanted to write songs, like your own songs, and then actually put them out there? I always wanted to be a songwriter, but when I was younger, I wrote my first song probably at about seven or eight, and it was just so many subjects in one. It was like about school, church, a dragon, a truck, and a princess, and it was all in one song, and I didn't know that you could write several songs. I thought you just had to have that one good one. And so I just, I sang it for my mama and she was like, mm -mm. Mm. and so I was like, okay. So I just figured I didn't need to be a singer songwriter, but probably Tree and I started in about probably 2014 bus gang and every, for, for about a year or so, everybody kept saying, y'all got to write your own music. I wasn't sure what you write about, you know, and so one guy just said, Hey, write about what you know. That's always the best thing. And so I said, well, I always knew I was going to be famous because I was a very dramatic child. I knew I was a little different. And I said, I knew the country like the back of my hand. And so, so the first song that I ever wrote was made for me on our Alpha Mud album. That's a mouthful. Once that door was open, we just kept writing. A tree would write and I would write. And we'd all write together. And so we just, we started kind of just fiddling around and see what feels good, what sounds good, what says what we want to say. And then the monsters were born, the songwriting <laughs> monsters. What do you think kind of gave you guys that final push to really, you know, give it a go? Especially whenever you have other people saying that, well, you know, what are the odds that you're going to make it out there? What are the, you know, what was that final push that made you go, no, we're doing this and y'all just going to have to accept it? <laughs> I always tell people, if we had any better sense, we would have went to Nashville to go do country music, but don't know how that didn't hit us. We ended up in New Orleans. And so everybody would always be like, there's no country music in the room. There's no country music. So we just kind of did party music, cover music, you know, just kind of all the stuff we listened to on the radio, fun stuff. And uh, we did that for a little while, but it just wasn't fulfilling. And we finally sat down and said, look, we got to take this chance. We got to at least take a chance on ourselves and take a chance on what we're writing and what we feel. And if it doesn't work, we are a hell of a cover band and I know we can do all right. And we can book weddings and 
uh, parties and all of that. And I was like, we'll still have a, a great future in music. But, you know, I was like, I just don't want it to get to a place where I say, well, if we only would have tried. And so we just sat down and wrote down, you know, put ourselves on paper and all the things that we've been through on paper and said, look, we'll give this to the world. And if they don't like it, that's okay. But it turned out completely just the opposite. We had so many people say, we hear all the time, like, I don't listen to country music, but I love you guys. And I love your songs and I love your messages. And this song did this and this song did that. And it's just mind blowing. So would you say that so far it's kind of surpassed your expectation or, or did you even have any expectations going in? I would say kind of both sides of that. Yes and no, because from the time we decided to do this, I always said the world domination, that's going to be the goal. So all of these other little mini steps in between, it's okay. That means we're on track. But at the same time, each of these quote unquote little steps in between, they're freaking monumentous when you think about it because I never would have thought growing up as a kid who watched CMT that I'd be on CMT eventually. But, you know, so it's still, it's like very surprising and mind-boggling that's happening. But it was also part of the plan. <laughs> and next, it's a tour bus. Yes, it's, what, <laughs> it's, my, it's uh, on my vision board. Because, <laughs> Lordy, we, grew, then we outgrew this band so fast. Our last tour that we did for the end of the year, we had everybody in the van and it was just, um, we didn't pull a trailer. So we had all equipment and all people in the van. And so it was quite interesting. So it made me realize quick, it's time for a tour bus. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm sure you, you love each other like the family that you are, but enough su snuggling is enough snuggling, you know? Ain't that the truth. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. On that note, you said you have 106 cousins. You're there's 108 of us. My grandmother has 17 kids and 108 grandkids. See, now I can 100% relate to that because my mom is one of 10 kids and my dad was one of four. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was one of 14. So. Oh, mom. So yes. Y'all, I'm one of like, at last count, like 136 cousins. And I know that's not even the real number anymore. Right. It's and it's like insane holidays, insane every it's always too many people when we get together. Yeah. Family reunions are like full blown events. Yeah. That should be checked off by the city. Yeah. <laughs> Got the fire marshal coming out. Nope, too many people. You're at capacity fifty people ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> so tell me about when you but, guys got that message that you were the uh, the part of the next women in country. For CMT. So, so initially our managers called us and they told us, and I think at the beginning we didn't really believe and we thought like they were just playing like a terrible joke on us and that they were just like messing around because they joke with us all the time, but they were like, no, we're like, we're serious. And I think we all just kind of froze up for a second and then screamed, but it was definitely a frozen shock couldn't believe it shook suck moment look by it you might get kicked out of the hotel for being so loud moment. yeah it was right. a scream that was definitely put you out of the hotel worthy it felt like one of those moments that like wow all the hard work got you here and it is just it was a super honor because that program is what's pushing out women in music right now because otherwise we'd be drowning we were just so shocked and honored to be a part of it. And there's such a, it's such an amazing class this year and CMT is doing some amazing things. And so now your video is on CMT. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. We were, we were, we were supposed to have a zoom call to meet Leslie. And so right before the zoom call, I was like, all right, ladies, let's just stay calm. It's just a conversation with Leslie Fram and it's just us and her. And as soon as, like I said, that as everybody started coming in, it was like, bling, 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 bling. I was like, where are you? And she was like, I told them I was had a meeting with Chapel Heart and everybody wanted to come and meet y'all. And so it was everybody and they wanted us to play a couple songs and we played You Can Have It and Jolene. And afterwards it was so quiet and everybody's, everybody was like, and I was, we were like, oh, we, we have another one if you want to hear another one. And Leslie just said, in 50 years of country music, no one has ever said that. And we were like, whoa. 
that the title alone is just hilarious and then you listen to the lyrics and then you watch the music video and y'all are snatching wigs and just jumping on people and it is a blast tell <laughs> tell me what your favorite part of filming that video is my favorite part was definitely all the interaction we got to do with the with the police officers from prep from past christian I mean, it ain't often that you pretty much get handed the keys to the city and they say okay what do you guys want to do and you know from running a buck in the jail to tussling with them in the bars probably my favorite part and the fact that they couldn't keep a straight face <laughs> i think my favorite part is definitely the fight scene i didn't know how it would turn out like after the fact like on camera i was like would it look real once we saw the video we were like all super pleased with how it came out and it we all thought it looked really real so we were just super excited about that that scene in particular my two major favorite parts is one is the fact that we're like if there's a fight scene should we call our friend mickey james and see if she can come and I, it was like a day before and I, I was like mickey i know you are probably the busiest person in the whole world i was like but we've got a, we're shooting a music video today's day one tomorrow we're doing this fight it's a big bar fight scene I was like, and we would love to have you. And she was like, oh, absolutely. I would love to. She was like, let me check a few things. And when I tell you, she was the best. And she came, she flew in. So having her there was so great. And she definitely helped us so much and gave us tips and pointers. But um, so Mickey James was definitely by far one of my favorite parts. And then um, my second favorite part was Eric, the lead guy is a good friend of mine. And we were doing the hit him over the head with the bottle scene. And he was like, if you just hit me on the top of the head, I don't think it'll hurt as bad. And so I have a huge problem that like when we're recording, I can't stop smiling. And so the director was like, Danica, there's one bottle left. Whatever you do, I need you to make this so serious. He's do not smile. Oh, don't say, he was like, focus. So as I'm focusing on being so serious, and they yell action and we do the shot. And I just crack him right into the top of the head. So now he has the tiniest little scratch. And he was like, no, he was going around telling everybody, I got this scratch on my head. Maybe I need an ice pack. I was like, you are an old pudding, pudding <laughs> cup. Cause uh, I was like, that scratch is not that big. People say, it was like, they're like, oh my God, the video is so hilarious. I was like, we've watched it a thousand times. And we still laugh every time. We find something new every time and we're like, oh my God, so. It was funny because our manager had actually gotten a call from Billy Giffins because he saw the video and he thought that it was kind of like a TMC leaked video of an actual bar fight. And he called the manager and he's like, I think they're, they're such sweet girls. And I don't know if we want this kid leaked out to the public that they got arrested. And like, Billy, like Billy, I love him back. so much. I don't know if it's a good move. <laughs> He was like, everything was staged. He was like, not sure why. <laughs> but it was, but I said, well, that, at least we know the acting was good. So you're working with people in Nashville. You're living your dream. You're getting there. But tell me, who have you not worked with yet that you absolutely want to? It is your absolute dream to work with. And it doesn't have to be just one. Just fill in the blank. Uh, we got a chance to meet, Zoom meet Gretchen Wilson. And, you know, she we, we were talking about her in an article and talking about how much she shaped us as women and be, to be able to come to country music and just authentically be ourselves. And we felt like she did that at the beginning of her career. And it, it was definitely an inspiration to us. And she said she saw that and she wanted to reach out and personally tell us thank you and write with us. And, you know, and so we were just like, oh my God, can you believe it? Dolly is definitely on Yes, it's gonna happen. I was like, we have to do. Put like, it out there. Put it out there. Yes, there you go. She's gonna watch. It. She's oh. gonna listen at this and be like, "I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta help my girl." But like, what an amazing recreation that would be to have her sing some of the song with us, and you know, yes. even if we did a live performance or something, that'd be incredible. Can oh. you imagine like a mashup of it, of like her doing <laughs> Jolene and y'all doing your part and that kind of back and forth? That would be hilarious. Amazing. <laughs> yes. I think we have to do one with Reba. Reba and Shania, and then I'll be good. Right. And so, like, there's so many. And people are like, when people are like, who are your, who's your favorite artist and who is your number one inspiration? We're like, we had like 25 as number one. So we are always just so grateful for it. could be a man playing fiddle on the side of the road. And we're like, you want to work with us? Say what? 
So we're grateful either way. All right, ladies, let's move on to the story behind the song. This is one of my favorite parts. Okay, I want to hear the story behind. You can have him, Jolene. Looking on YouTube, we did a cover of Dolly Parton's 9 to 5. For that video, I had on a shirt that said, you can have him sign Jolene. And so from there, it just kind of sparked the idea of, you know, who does she think she is? Why not? Why don't we write a song? Rather than you can have him sign Jolene, you're like, you can just have him Jolene. Like, he's too much. She's not worth the drama. So it's like, just keep him. He's He can be your problem and not mine. So it basically was inspired from a t-shirt and we went from there. <laughs> right, and, but that, that's exactly it. And we were just, who does this have to think she is? How are you gonna give somebody something that you stole? And so like, we, when we sat down to write it out, we just had so many hilarious scenarios and you know, but as much energy as in the video is as much energy in the song and the songwriting process. And I think that was one of the most exciting things for us because it it all kind of correlated, like it all, it made sense. Cause sometimes somewhere down the line, you lose something and you know, it doesn't end as exciting as it started. But this song from thought process to us being in the kitchen laughing about it to actually sitting down to write it, everything was so exciting. And, and all the way down to the music video. All right, and moving on to Jesus and Alcohol. Okay, so we wrote Jesus and Alcohol whenever we were we were crammed in a tiny hotel room about this big in Nashville, right off near Percy Priest. And, you know, usually we get, whenever we travel, we try to get like somewhere that can at least accommodate us for, but this is one of those rare times we were like kind of crammed in, the weather was bad. So we were like, just all holed up in one room. And, and Danica was in the bathroom playing the guitar. Don't ask why she was in the bathroom playing the guitar. <laughs> but, and she was like strumming through Amazing Grace. And we had asked our lovely manager, Derek, if he would go on a beer run so we could get some writing materials. And, and Devin had this like bright idea. She's like, let's make a song with an alliteration in it. And she's, you know, like Bible, verb, and breakup. And then there was like a pause. And I almost feel like a cartoon character because you could, I feel like you could almost see the light bulb go off above their heads. <laughs> and we're like, okay, this is going to be pretty awesome. And we wrote the whole song in in about 20 minutes or less, because by the time our manager came back with the alcohol that we sent him for, we had a whole song. <laughs> and, and so we like played through it a couple times. And then the next day we took it to our booking manager, <clears throat> I'm sorry, <clears throat> our booking agent, Jeff Hill. And we played it and then it was kind of quiet. And we were thinking, well, I guess it's not as great as we thought it was. And then like, he just thought, he said, don't touch it don't change it don't do anything to it we were like oh <laughs> and it was pretty good <laughs> but yeah and he he ended up taking it and he knows billy gibbons kind of we used they were we and zz top were on the same but had the uh -huh. same booking agency and so he was still i think they ended up switching over but he was still friends with billy and he was like billy never calls me back he said i could literally leave him 300 messages to call me back he never calls me back he said, so I was sending him some of, he says, I sent him some of y'all's music. And then he said, then I sent him Jesus and alcohol. And he was like, whoa, he said, man, this song is, and he said he was so blown away by, he texted him back and was like, whoa, this song just blew him away. And then he said, then he sent him a picture of us. He said, he called me in five seconds. It was like, what is his, what in the world? What is this? He said, what are you? He was like, who are these girls? He said, you, you're pulling my leg right now. He said, no, it's a new group called Chapel Heart. And then he was just so blown away. He said, whatever I can do to help those girls, please let me know. And um, we were like, well, we got a video. We need to make a music video. And he was like, let me know when and where. And he showed up, you know, he gave us his word and he showed up and, you know, it just, the rest was, there's Jesus and alcohol. And there it is. And the next one I've got, I Will Follow. I Will Follow was a song that we, it was the first, one of the first outside songs. That we got Just Say I Love You and I Will Follow that, you know, I guess was pitched to us, but we didn't know like how Nashville pitching songs and all that worked. We heard I Will Follow and instantly I said, this is ours. Like we, we have to take it. And everybody kind of looked and I'm like, what do we, I don't know if we have to thumb wrestle for it or you have to wig snatch, who can snatch the wig first? 
But I was like, we got to have this. That we heard I will follow. And it spoke everything that we mm -hmm. believed, everything that we were going through, everything about our journey. And it was just one of those instant connections. And and then we were on tour and we were like, this is the video. It's it's what we do. It's traveling. It's on the road. It's, you know, having to have dinner at McDonald's sometimes. It's having to, you know, but it's making friends along the way. And I think that video completely captured the song and it captured who we are. It captured our little family on the road that, you know, it, it was everything. And that, that just kind of, I will follow, I feel like. It just kind of, you know, once we got it, everything made sense and everything kind of fell into place. That's awesome. And my next one is Country Paradise. That looked like a fun video to shoot. It still doesn't even seem like it was one of those days for work because we pretty much just got together and hung out at the creek all day long. And, and it's, we actually shot it in one of our favorite places to hang out as a kid. It's a little creek called Bowley Creek. <laughs> and it's literally one of those, you, you're riding down a random back road and then you see like a line of trucks next to a bridge and you walk under the bridge and there's like a whole neighborhood party going on yeah. at the creek. That's just kind of illustrating all the places that we go. There's still nothing like, you know, just going and hanging out at the creek under a bridge with all of your good friends. And, you know, we were able to hang out, play with a bunch of kids there, had a little, had a little barbecue and have fun in our country paradise. It's, gosh. Yeah. I have so many memories of that growing up, like just near a river and God, we had a pond out by the house and it was just like, so there's always, there's always a good spot to just jump in some water somewhere, cool down. Cause we all know it gets just a little bit too hot in the South. <laughs> all right, gals, those are all the questions I have regarding uh, the songs and stuff. And uh, my next segment is just for fun. Let's just get to know the gals a little bit. So I, I, I don't okay. know how much, I don't know how much free time y'all have these days, but if you do, are you watching anything on the, on, on the little, the TV or the UE tube or the Netflix and whatnot? And if so, what you watching? I'm watching good girls on Netflix. Okay. Oh, I, I started it, but I got what episode in, but I've been stuck on audio books. And then I just recently discovered this book called The Indignities of Being a Woman, and it's freaking hilarious. <laughs> you should definitely check it out if you're, uh, if you're about the audible life. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not much. I, I'm not much of a TV watcher only because I don't know how to do it right. Like, I'm a binge watcher, but I got to see it through from top to finish. And so sometimes I don't sleep for two or three days. And so I just have been put on punishment from being a Netflix season watcher. But I did start Dr. Foster, and I hadn't got back into it yet, but it's so good. Typical to me, I think it's so good. And CMT to see if we're on it. <laughs> oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I, that's what I'd be doing too if right. I ever had that opportunity. And so <laughs> what is at least one item on your bucket list? I got to go with the Grand Ole Opry. Like the day that we're there and I'm standing in that circle, I am just going to, they may have to just move my lips and just play the track because I'm going to be dead. Okay. Like, <laughs> But I, that, I think that's my bucket list. I'd like to have a conversation with Rachel Wilson when I when we got to talk to her. <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even say anything. I just sat there and cried and put my mouth open. So it would be great so to actually have a conversation with her. So if that counts. At the end, she was like pouring like bawling and she was like and at the, well at the end of the conversation, Gretchen said, Well, maybe next time I'll get a chance to hear what your voice sounds. So she was like but so finally, like at the end of it, she was like, well, she was like, well, at least Gretchen Wilson wants to know what my boy sounds like. <laughs> so bucket list for sure. You have to put it on there. If not, the second meeting is going to be really awkward. Right. Just Chapel Heart being a household name musically all around the world, period. And that's your bucket list? Yes. Okay. And, well, that's the nice way of saying world domination. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's say, you know, you're playing at the Grand Ole Opry, you're already on CMT, you're doing big venues. Let's just say the, the money's coming in, you're living the dream, you get a nice paycheck for royalties or whatever it is, uh-huh, and how would you treat yourself? 
ooh, I would treat myself to a 1967 step size Chevy that's like seafoam green and white with like little chrome details. And I'll have the biggest workshop known to man and a little bitty shack to live in. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably pretty accurate. I don't have too many huge things that I want or too many kind of materialistic things that I want, but I've always wanted a G-Wag again, like my entire life. I just think they look so cool. And probably when I get one, I'll be like this, but it's just always what I wanted. So that'll probably be like my splurge thing. And I've got a couple of people that I want to help out. And I think that, you know, I think I'll be good and everything else will just kind of be, you know, the pickup stuff along the way, but G wagon and helping folks is my first, my, when I get my first free, I can make it rain somewhere. My first splurge is going to be paying off my car because I am literally so tired of a car note. It is the worst thing I've ever signed up for in my life. I don't wish it on anybody. <laughs> Don't ever get a car. No, just go ahead and pay for it. So I'll be get taking you a care bike. of it. Then I'm going to buy a bike after. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know yet. Oh, gosh. Yeah, the American dream is debt. Oh, gosh. Right. Come on. Mm-mm. Got to get on some Dave Ramsey there. Woo. Right. All right. This is probably one of my favorite questions. What's the worst thing you each did as a kid? Tree has a thousand. So I don't know if she can just pick one. I'll go. Yeah, um, you go. <laughs> one time, my cousin and I were like just kind of playing around at the house, and for whatever reason, I thought it'd be a good idea to dial nine one one and then hang up. Well, the cops ended up showing up. We were hiding in the house, and once the cops like got out the car and started walking towards the door, I just got out of the hiding spot, ran outside, and I was like, "She made me do it." Like <laughs> I blamed everything on her. And I think that's about the worst. I wasn't a bad kid, so that was probably the worst. I did the exact same thing. I ever got in. Did you look right? That not that checking to see if nine one one is a real number. If it works, <laughs> that kills you as a kid. But you know, does it work? You yeah. know, and then what is classified as an emergency? If I want something to eat and my mom won't go get it, is that an emergency? You know what, Danica, that's not the worst thing. What? what was it? One time I put citrate in my mom's lemonade. <laughs> and it was, what is it? It's like, this, like oh, the laxative. Oh, liquid laxative. And oh, so, um, yeah, I think she thought that was going to take her right on out of here. Good thing it didn't. No, I know not want to take her out. I just wanted to poop a little bit. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Come on. I bet you'll say, yeah, but, yes, next time, Mom. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know, I was in like a chef mode or something as a kid. Like we were like teenagers, me and Tree, and I was gonna show her how to cook a pork chop and you know, I was, but next thing you know, the pan catches on fire and I'm like, ah! So I'm like swinging it around and the flames go up and I'm like, ah! So then I turn on the water and try to do it and it blazes up in the kitchen. I was like, ah! So then I just go outside and wave it around and find, I literally prayed one of the hardest prayers of my life lord to put this fire out and i promise i'm going to be the best person i can be or whatever it is that you need for me because i almost set my grandmother's house on fire and i knew i could not live with that in my heart of hearts like why does your grandmother not have a place to live because i set it on fire making pork chop not a good story so definitely by far one of the worst things worst experiences i've ever been through <laughs> Okay, well, one thing that I did, like, I feel like a lot of people feel this way, but like, if you don't get a whooping, you might as well make it worth it. My dad Smitty, he would call me on so much BS. I was like, oh, I'm going to get it one day. Because I think he wouldn't let me, like, go to my friend's house or something. And he had just been diagnosed as a diabetic, and he had asthma, like, his whole, like, life. And so I, like lit every scented candle in the house, spraying perfume and air freshener and everything else in hopes of giving him an asthma attack. <laughs> and then, and, the devil. But that didn't work because he spent all day outside working on his boat. And so I like, you know, I like switched all the sugar with the salt and that didn't work because he didn't drink coffee that day. And then so I made him a candle that had one of those, what is it, like the M88, the little firecrackers inside of it and so i pretty much just 
made a candle around a firecracker and then engraved I'm sorry on the candle and gave it to him. And that worked. <laughs> no! <laughs> I got my ass beat, but it worked. Oh my so God. it just like, it just oh, like exploded God. in the house? Well, it wasn't very big. There was, you know, just like candle wax on the ceiling and stuff, you know. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but other than that, you know, I was an angel. I'm just going to take your word for it. Week, what she meant was hell years. I, I think that one might fit into my next question, which is what's the most adventurous or riskiest thing you've ever done? I'm going to say travel. I'd never been to Europe before. So, and we went by ourselves we, with the van, but by ourselves to get us, navigate us through and definitely an adventure and it scared the crap out of me, but I did it and it was the most amazing thing. The most adventurous thing I've ever done is join this band because <laughs> I don't know who I thought I was agreeing willingly to be like, you know, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with Annika and Tree. And then I got here. And they've been driving me crazy ever since. <laughs> and she ain't left yet. Right. <laughs> Honestly, of all of the dangerous things I've done in my life, I think the most adventurous was being on a golf cart while Danica was driving. There were a couple of moments where I'm sure me and all the other 10 people who were over capacity on a golf cart felt like fear for their lives at one point, like hitting corners and just like <laughs> NASCAR golf carting. And yeah, it still gives me a little flashback every now and then. <laughs> right. So, I, Danica, you must be taking driving lessons from my husband then, because every day in the car, I'm just like. <laughs> right. Every day is another adventure. <laughs> Whew. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, y'all, moving on to a little segment I call Could You Not? It's just, whether it's professional or personal or traffic related, I don't care just what, it could have something to do with your dog I, or each other. Doesn't matter. Whatever it is that just gets under your skin for each of you, just tell the world. Could you not? World, would you not? Could you not hook up your children to those little monkey backpack leashes? <laughs> it, we, we, we stare at you, okay? And I know it helps you keep up with your kid, but we stare at you. I will tell you this. As a mom, <laughs> I have been very tempted to do that. I haven't done it, but I, like my kids are... are yeah, my kids are four, three, and one and a half. So... I, I, oh, yeah. I've, I've considered I mean, it. Yeah, y'all giving me a Cat Williams flashback. Desperate the, the little times, blue leashes. For desperate yeah. measures. I know, but we stare at you guys. We do. We secretly judge you in our heads. No, but there was. This, I will say, we, we saw not too long ago this one little boy that was on a leash, and he was like, chow, chow. "I was like, now nah, I don't blame her. I think it's maybe situational." I'll just say the South. Could y'all not? Make crawfish sixteen freaking dollars a pound. Ooh, yes. right. I'm ready to eat a lot of crawfish, but not have to pay a billion dollars for crawfish. Take out a small loan to enjoy it, even the crawfish. Make crawfish one ninety nine again. Yes, that's a hat I will wear. Okay, dear America especially when visiting the South, could you not forget to show appreciation to somebody who lets you in in traffic? It's a world-known, like, courtesy. If somebody lets you in, you give a little wave or a little nod or a little, like a grandfather. Some well, kind of way, you got to show that you're appreciative. Because if you let them in and they don't say thank you, it just makes you want to cut them off again. It really does. So, right. so. <laughs> Take your spot back. Yeah, I live in Dallas, and it's, yeah, every day. My final segment here is a little thing called, Why in the Sam Hill do we say that? The one that I picked is, Why in the Sam Hill do we say that we have beef with someone? Where, where, what's that origin? So I'm going to give you the short version of that because it was really long, and I was like, I'm not going to do that to these wonderful ladies. So why in the Sam Hill <laughs> do we say that we have beef with someone? So it's meant as a complaint. I'm sure y'all know that. And it came into use in the U.S. in the 1880s. The origin of the term is unknown, but some speculate that it refers to too beefy, meaning masculine. Muscular. Oh, Jesus and alcohol. 
<laughs> Meaning muscular <laughs> men <laughs> settling a dispute with violence. Others believe it is tied to the Cockney rhyming slang, hot beef, which means stop thief. Sure. How would this have traveled to the United States is unknown. Others believe it may have something to do with the competition between ranchers and farmers during the days of American pioneering. The word beef is derived from the old French word. I'm going to butcher this one. Boeuf. 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 Y'all can give that a try if you want to. Which means the flesh of cows or oxen. So now we know, sort of, why we say that. Now we know. Oh my gosh. All right. Is there anything else you ladies want to add before I let you go? No, this has been an amazing interview and we've had so much fun. Good. I'm glad you guys had some fun. All right. Well, girls, thank you so much for being on Board and Curious today. This was awesome. And I wish you guys all the luck that you deserve. And that is a lot. Thank, thank you. you. All righty, y'all. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Board and Curious. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to head on over to the description so you can keep track of uh, Chapel Heart and their tour, their music, and all that great stuff. And make sure you give us a follow over on social media. And be sure to subscribe or follow the podcast. Thanks again and see you next time.